Bruce Lawn. So for me, I started to write online. I started to kind of explore. And then I did a blog for about a year that nobody read. And then I started this other one, Stuff Christians Like, which was just a ripoff kind of riff of another idea. Somebody had a blog called Stuff White People Like. And I always thought it was funny <laughs> that Christians rip off popular ideas. Like we take something that the world does, then we put a Christian spin on it and we do our version. And it's usually whack. And so I said, stuff Christians like num idea number one, ripping off popular culture. And I talked about that as a problem. And I just started writing funny things that as believers, I think we do. I don't want to get too, too far in the weeds, but you made this interesting point. You said, historically, Christians have kind of jacked culture, right? Yeah. And, and kind of made yeah. it on. But I also know you're a Kanye fan because because you talk about sure. some Kanye quotes in a soundtracks book. Yeah. Um, what do you what do you make of what seems to be this new iteration? Where it almost seems like we're going back to how gospel music influenced blues and then blues yeah. influenced rock. And it seems like we've kind of came full circle where a lot of the top tier artists, Kanye, one, arguably one of the most influential, uh, is now making music for Christ. He took out the cussing on Donda. You know, he put out Jesus is King, Jesus is Born. As a Kanye fan, as a creator, what do you make of all that? Yeah, well, I mean, I just, you know, I always uh, I always joke that, like, it's always fascinating me when it comes to God and creativity, because that's what we're talking about with that question. That, like, I love when we'll discover, like, three miles deep in the ocean in the Mariana Trench, some, um, you know, some jellyfish that no human's ever seen, and it'll be polka dotted. And you're like, why is that polka dotted? Well, for thousands of years, the only one getting delight out of that was God. Like, that's how creative he is. Like, he's hidden jellyfish at the bottom of the ocean we've never seen that are striped and neon blue. And it's like, I'm creative. So I think it's natural for some artists like a Kanye to go, man, when I connect with God, mm. like, there's a creative source there that I've never experienced before. And so I think that's sometimes what happens is you go, wow. Like, and if you think about it, like, the world didn't have to be beautiful. Like whenever we as humans design a future world in movies, it's gray. We're all wearing the same gray unitards. It's, <laughs> it's all bleak. dystopian. <laughs> it's dystopian. Like God didn't have to make the Rockies. He didn't have to make the ocean. And so like, I think guys like Kanye, when they bump into that reality of like, whoa, maybe I grew up with a kind of black and white version of God that was kind of boxed in and wasn't creative. And then as I actually get a personal relationship, I go, Oh my gosh, like he's painting with a palette we don't have access to, like, but he shares it. Like as we draw close to him, like, wow. I think I think in moments like that, it's almost impossible not to kind of create with that in mind. If you, you know, in the in the context of a personal relationship. Do you think that's kind of the, the key in unlocking creativity for the people who aren't Christian? Like when, when they unlock and understand that God is a creative God, that, that everything isn't binary. Some things are obviously, but everything isn't binary. And then that kind of becomes the the appeal of this personal Jesus that's not this rule stickler and making you how always having to tuck in your shirt, right? And I think, yeah. it, it, this, do you think that's what opens up creatives to saying, Oh, I'm in. And then those yeah. are the, those are the, those are the culture makers then. I think, I mean, like for me, I think it's just when you bump into who God really is, who Jesus really is. And like, it's not like it's hidden. I mean, like the Bible, like, you know, one of my favorite stories that a lot of what I write about comes from is Luke 15, the prodigal son story. And I always tell people like, it's wild that we have a God who fixes problems with a party. There's no other part of life that works that way. Like if you get in trouble at work, say you lose some account, whatever, you you know, you know, mess something up with a customer or a client, your boss doesn't call you in and go, hey, you blew it. So we're having a party. Like if you get in a big <laughs> fight with your wife, she doesn't go, I'm so mad that you lied to me. I'm so mad that you were deceptive. I got a bounce house. But in the prodigal son story, the prodigal returns and the problem is fixed with a party. So when you start to go like, whoa, wait a second, and you really start to kind of engage in like, here's this God that's crazy about me, that loves me, that says you ask and you so receive, like, you know, all things work together for the good. Like when you start bumping into that, and again, having a personal relationship versus going, I inherited this view of faith from this specific person. So I thought God was this shape. And you really start to walk in it and you go, whoa, it's bigger, it's better than I ever could have imagined. That's where I, I just think art is a natural extension of that. And your mm. art can be, you create songs, your art can be, mm -hmm. you write books, but it can also be your kind to your neighbor. Mm. Like being kind to a neighbor who's not easy to be kind to is art. 
Mm. Like asking a question of a coworker who's going through a difficult situation, that's art. So I think yeah. as we engage with a creative God, it's almost impossible not to be creative ourselves. In terms of your your journey as a creative, it seems like you've been able to really flourish as a follower of Jesus in the marketplace, in terms of the general market, your books aren't necessarily like, like over, uh, uh, soundtracks isn't like a Christian yeah. book. The, Quitter is not a Christian book. book. Yeah. They're business books. And, yeah. and yet your faith is, is rock solid. How do you navigate that space of being a Christian follower of Jesus who is able to flourish in culture, in the business space, in the entrepreneurial space. Um, I know you do a lot of speaking at these big companies for all these employees and leaders, and you're there as a follower of Jesus. And I, I've never known you to like downplay that part or like hide that part of your life. How, how, do, how are you able to navigate those spaces? Well, I look at it the same way. I mean, there's a couple of different ways I talk about it. One is like, if a surgeon, if I'm having surgery and I'm about to go under anesthesia, I'm going to hold up real quick. What's your faith? Like, I want the bad, I want the <laughs> best surgeon. Like, I'm yeah. not like, hold on a second. No, this guy's Muslim. Find me somebody who's Christian, even if they suck at surgery. No, like, no, I want an amazing practitioner. So like for my, for my role, like I show up and I want to be the best keynote they've ever had. Like, my faith in influences everything I do. But at the end of the day, if I roll into Comedy Central to deliver a keynote about how to accomplish your goals, you better believe much like a surgeon, I'm going to crush that keynote. And I'm going to say, here's the research. Here's what we found. Here's how to do it. Here's the steps. Here's the actions. So that's one part of it. Um, the second part of it, I had a NPR podcast ask me that question kind of. They're like, hey, growing up, your dad took you to comedy clubs. Like that's where some of my humor comes from. Mm -hmm. Like that doesn't see, and your dad's a pastor. That seems different than what we understand about the church. And I was like, well, not if you really read it. Like mm. if you read the Bible, Jesus was always going places that the religious might go, Whoa, wait a second, wait a second. Yep. So Come that on. to me was just like, why would I not be there? Like that's where versus going, I hope people come to my church. So like, mm. I looked at it, I look at it that way that, you know, it's gonna, I want to do it with excellence. Um, I want to, you know, my books, soundtracks, do over finish quitter are research based business books that help yeah. you change your life. Do I, am I, you know, if you want to talk faith, if you want to ask questions about that all day, let's go there, but I'm going to be the best surgeon I can be. And you're not going to have to go, wait a second. Like I just didn't like growing up. It, it killed me that if I saw an ick through on somebody's business card, it usually meant they sucked at their job. Like it <sighs> meant like they weren't going to be the best. And I don't yeah. think that regardless of what you think, like that yeah. doesn't give, our God, a very good rep. Like if we go like, I'm going to be a terrible plumber, but I'm going to pray before <laughs> I mess up your toilet. Like, dude, no, I want yeah. my toilet to work. Like, what yeah. are you talking about? King stream entertainment. Bruce lawn. Hey, thank you so much for making it till the end of this video. Remember to hit that like button and make sure you subscribe. I wanted to tell you about a free upcoming course I am putting together at mastermyhabits.com. When you sign up right now, you'll be the first to be notified about the course. And in the meantime, you'll immediately get access to a playlist going over my journey on how I went from addiction to freedom forming habits. So make sure to hit that link in the description. I'll see you on the next video.